Hello everybody, my name is Shannon and this is Jinjo Stitches. This is my third Floss 2 video. It has been a little while since my last one, so I thought I'd give you an update with what's going on with me first and then we can get into some stitching. So, it has been a little while, like I said. It's been over a month, I think, maybe a month and two weeks, month and a half-ish, since I recorded a video. Um, and a lot's been happening, and that's why. So right before I filmed my very first Floss 2 video, I actually had started a new job. And then I filmed a second video two weeks later, I think. And then two weeks after that, my boss went on leave for a month and a half. She went on a vacation and it was just me and my other co-worker in the office. So we were busy. So really busy with work, working a little bit of overtime not in the mood to sit down and film a video when I finally get home. But she's back now. We're back up to three people, fully staffed again, so I've got a bit more time to myself now. Um, and the other thing is, is that I get these chronic headaches um, in clusters. And another cluster started up right after my second video, but it's easing off now. So we're good. We're good. We're doing great. We're doing great. So that's where I've been. Um, in between all of that, trying to plan an engagement party. We got engaged in January of this year, so it has been nine months and we still have not had an engagement party, let alone planned anything for a wedding. It's not going to happen for at least a few years. That's fine. That's all fine. Just trying to get that done in between everything else. Um, and as always, constant house repairs, renovations, painting, working on things, trying to make this house the house that we've always wanted it to be. Um, so yeah, that's where I've been. Busy, busy, busy. But more importantly, let's look at some stitching. So it's going to start with the new starts. Only one for this month and a half. I haven't had a lot of time, but I'm very happy with this one new start. So it is this pattern here from Studio Answer Truth. Halloween Pumpkin Cottage, I think it's called, something like that. Um, it is so cute. It is so cute. I love it so much. So there's six in this series, six different cottages, six or five, six, I think it's six. Um, and this was the favorite, like my favorite. So I started this one first. And let me show you how far I am with it. Bam. We are this far. I am loving it. I love the colors. I think they work so nicely together. The orange and the, like a charmeleon red. Oh, so pretty. I love it so much. So I have done this much, which per Pattern Keeper is about 4%, I think it was, 4.5%. I started this on Monday, Monday the 12th. It is currently September 18th. I always forget to say what day it is. It's currently September 18th, Sunday in Australia. Um, and I started this on Monday. So I've had one week of stitching and I'm 4% through. Pretty happy with that. I did have to frog a very large section of this orange over here from about here on. Pulled that all out and redid it. So that was about a good percent that I had to redo. That's fine. I'm still happy. I'm having a great time. This is on a 36 count even weave. Um, not linen, cotton even weave. I like this so much better than linen. There are no slubs. It is so even. It is beautiful. I love it. Um, I did take a little bit of footage of this in natural light up close so you can see the stitches a little better because it's a bit hard to see with this little webcam. So I'll insert that if I can figure it out. Um, so you can have a look but yeah the fabric is just so even and so nice to stitch on. I don't love slubs. I know that they make no difference to the finished product. I've stitched on it before. I like the finished product. But while I'm stitching, I can't get it out of my head that some of the stitches are going to be bigger, even though they never are. I don't know. So absolutely loving this by Studio and Citru. So that is the only new start. I didn't do a lot of stitching, like I said. Oh, that was loud. Um, progress. I've only stitched on two other things in this whole month and a half. Two other things. First one is this Dimensions ornament, which is nearly finished. I don't know if you remember what it looked like last time. I will see if I can pop a pic in here of where I was last time. But now 
We are almost done. Look at that. Oh, I love it so much. The little cookie sign. That is so cute. So all I have left is backstitch. All of the actual cross stitch is done. And all I have left to do is backstitch. And I am so happy with it. I think it looks great. Now, because this is a set of six, again, the fabric that they give you, I've marked it all out. They only give you like enough to just do the six, right? That makes sense. But because of that, I'm already having trouble with this one. This edge is so close to the edge of my Q-snap that I have to take it out to stitch on this row here, like the last two rows, I think. So I'm thinking I might not fully finish this. I might just stitch it so that then when I work on these middle ones, if I feel fully finish it, I'm going to have to cut it out and then I'm going to have the same problem with the middle ones. If I leave it, I can just pop the Q-snaps over this and then I can stitch the middle ones without having it to be too close to the edge. So that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. We'll see. We'll see what I do. I don't know yet. But it would be nice if I could fully finish it and then I could have it on the tree this Christmas. But I don't know if it's worth it having to take the Q-snap off all the time. I don't know. We'll see. So that one by Dimensions. Um, that is on 18 count Ada. I think I started it quite some time ago. So I'm happy to have at least one finished. And I just thought I would share. I don't know if I've shown this before. I might have. I've only done two videos and I already can't remember things. But I just wanted to show how I sort my floss for Dimensions kits. And a lot of you have probably seen this before. But what I like to do with my Dimensions floss... I like to actually keep them on these cards and braid them up or plait them. I don't know what the vernacular is, but I like these cards. I don't trust myself to label something. I'm just worried that one day I will finish a project, it'll look weird, and I've labeled one of the flosses wrong, right? So if it's on here, then I know that they're definitely the color that they're labeled. So I like to braid them in three sections, right? and then braid those three sections. And this is great because what you can actually do, you can snip a single thread at the top and pull it out of the braid and it stays braided. It's perfect. It's so easy to get a single thread out. I love it so much and it doesn't get all tangled. I've done the same to this one, but my cats have chewed up this one. Thankfully, I can still read the colors. Um, but yeah, it's just so much easier if you just braid them. Love it absolutely love it so that is the dimensions ornament which i will finish i will finish it it's so close to done i will finish it that's like an afternoon's work i can do that and then the last thing i worked on is the new start that i had in my last video and it is this sailor moon piece actually i have a mock-up picture here you go that's what it'll look like when it's done She's huge. I love her. I love her so much. This is so pretty. I can't deal with it. This is by Make It Pink. Um, I'll leave a link down below for all of the pattern makers that I've mentioned here. Um, but yeah, this is by Make It Pink. Ashley. Um, original art is by Hannah Alexander. The original art is by Hannah Alexander. And she is just so beautiful. Look at her. Oh, I love her so much. Oh, it literally says it in the middle of the picture. I'm stupid. So, this is, oh my god, let's take the picture down. God, what am I doing today? This is where I am at with Sailor Moon. So I've done the bottom part of her boots and some of the dress. And you can't see it at all in this lighting, but the stars are actually cranic. And they shimmer and sparkle, and it is so pretty. And I've done a little bit of the back stitching because I was getting a bit bored of the cross stitch now you'll also notice there are some gaps especially over here those ones are for cranic that i just haven't done yet but these ones over here those little single stitch gaps are actually for beads um so i'm leaving those out i've never beaded before so i'm leaving them out and i'm hoping that i can just do them all at the end that's what i've read is the best way to do them so we'll see we'll see but it's going to be a long way before that because this is nowhere near done like just just to reference once again this is how far i am right 
Remember that shape. And then this is the pattern. So I have literally done like, oh, what am I doing? Like this much at the bottom, like that much. If that, I've only done that bottom pink of the boots. Not very far. That's okay. A lot of it is blends from here on out. So the boots went really quickly because that was like a single color and then I can loop start. My least favorite part of cross stitching is threading my needle and starting my thread. So when I have a blend and I can't loop start, I get very annoyed. I just don't want to start stitching. So I try to, when I'm in the flow, finish with a threaded needle already started. So put in at least a couple stitches with a new needle and then leave it so that the next time I come back, I'm ready to just pick it back up and stitch. And then when I'm in the zone and I'm already stitching, it's easier for me to change colors. But that's always where I'll stop. Usually I'll, I'll get to a color change and I'll be like, oh, I can't be bothered getting the color out, loading the needle, starting the thread. I just can't be bothered. Um, so that is where I normally fall down. So that's why things have been moving a bit slower. The shoes, very quick, one color. The cranic, fine. I don't love it, but I can stitch it. Almost all of this like colored dress part at the bottom here blends. So that's okay. I love her. I love her enough to persevere through these blends. And I love the way they're charted. I think I've said this, but the way that Make It Pink charts her work is so, so easy to follow. I love it so much. Now I also have a clip of this in the natural light, which I will insert as well. Just so you can see the fabric as well. I think it's a really nice fabric for this project. Then, haul. Oh, what have we got? What have I bought? A few things. Let's have a look. The first thing is a meter by 1.8 meters, huge, of 36 count even weave. Same even weave I am doing the Halloween cottage on. This is huge. If I hold this up, you can't see me. Like if I unfold it and hold it up, it covers me. It is massive. I will never need for 36 count ever again in my life. This is enough. This will last me forever. Very happy. This was from Sew It All Australia. Um, and it was pretty cheap. I think it was 80 or $90 for more fabric than I'll ever use in my whole life. Love it. And then the second thing is this natural colored even weave like natural brown this one is linen um, so it does have the slubs but that's fine I am saving this for the link and Zelda patterns from make it pink I think it'll look really nice and I've bought enough that I can cut it in half and fit them both so that's 90 centimeters by a meter um, and I can cut it in half and fit one on each half so I hope, I hope I did that math right. Um, and that is, yeah, 36 count linen even weave. Really, really pretty. Love it. Now, another thing that I got, a lot of things that I got, actually. Um, this is a whole container of beads from Wendy's Beads and Things. So in this container are bags and bags and bags of beads. Each bag has I think it's 0.5 grams of beads of Mill Hill glass beads um, and there is the full range of several sizes I love this because those Ashley May patterns have like eight or nine beads from lots of different beads like types of beads so with this I don't have to buy a full pack which is like this many beads for every single one. This particular bead, there was two of in that Sailor Moon pattern. Two, one, not many, less than 10. And now I have a full, like four grams of it that I'm never gonna use. So this is a really good option, Wendy's Beads and Things. She also sells packs. I believe you can request packs specifically catered for each of these Make It Pink patterns. So they'll come with just what you need to complete the pattern, um, or maybe like 0.5 grams of each color that you need to complete the pattern, um, which is great. I absolutely love that idea. Super quick shipping from America. 
Um, normally that takes forever. It was actually pretty quick. It was only a couple weeks. One color was missing, but she let me know that immediately and like in the package and then sent it separately, um, which is great and probably would have been expensive for her. It's expensive to ship to Australia. So I wouldn't have minded if she had just waited and sent it all together. Um, so I thought that was really sweet. So absolutely love it. Really, really quality. Um, you can find her on Facebook at Wendy's Beads and Things. And then the last thing that I bought for my stitching, stitching adjacent, is this tablet stand. Wow, look at this. This was $12 from Kmart. I love it. This has changed my life. I have a tablet that I use for my patterns. This one, right? And it's just a cheapie. But if it just sits flat on the couch, it is so hard for me to actually see what I'm doing. This holds it up for me so I can see my patterns. It's great. I love it so much. It's wonderful. Wow. So helpful. Thank you, Kmart. I can fit the tablet, my phone, and the TV remote on this. So I'm not losing them anymore. And I can see my pattern. Wonderful. I love it so much. So that's everything that I did this month, month and a half, since my last video. Now I thought the other thing that I would do for you this week is give you a little bit of a tour of my teaching, stitching space, not teaching space, my stitching space, and go through a few of the things that I use, um, like my stand, um, how I store my floss and my fabrics and my projects, my light, um, and how everything I sort of have it set up, I guess. So I'm going to take you through that now. So this is my stitching corner in the corner of our lounge room where we spend most of our time. It's got all my stuff over in that corner, my light, my stand, um, everything like that. And then this is my stand. So this is a lowery stand. I really, really like this. My stitching has gotten so much faster since I've gotten this. I can two-handed stitch now. So the reason I like this one is because it can flip all the way to the back for when you're finishing a thread. Um, and it's got a lot of different points where you can manipulate it. So it can extend, it can flip like that from this point. Then it also has a little pattern holder for this magnetic pattern board. I don't use it for patterns because I don't print my patterns. I use it for my colors, but I still find it really helpful. Now it also has this point here, um, which raises and lowers the height, which is again, really helpful when you're stitching in different places. If I move it to the bed, then I need it to be a bit lower because I'm lying down. Um, so that's really great as well. Now this is where I store all my stitching stuff in the cabinet on the left. Um, and I've also got some storage overhead that you saw. So one of them is this old Singer sewing case. Um, I keep a lot of my excess fabrics um, and stuff like that in there. So we've got some carbon paper, some fabrics. This little baggie has all of my grime guards for my Q-snaps. And then this little baggie is just extra stuff. So a lowery care kit, extra pens, needle minders, needles, that kind of thing all in there and again that's overhead on the cabinet and then this is the other overhead storage bin that I keep this has all of my ongoing projects um, and anything that's fully kitted I like to try and keep in there as well um, just because it's easy access if I'm ever bored of something and I want to switch out the project then it's really easy to just pull it down and grab it out so this bottom drawer is where I keep most of my stitching stuff all of the floss is bobbinated and sorted and then in these numbered cases um, that's how I like to keep them organized. And then there's some that I haven't yet sorted and everything like that. Bobbinating takes too long for me, so sometimes I just work from the skein like that. Um, more fabrics that didn't fit in the Singer box and a couple of my ongoing projects that I know I'm not going to touch anytime soon live in there as well. Um, and then at the very bottom we've got some hoops. I used to store all of this in like a trolley. Um, that I had next to the couch. So these hoops, I just made a little felt loop for them and that way I could hang them off the side of the trolley. So that's all of those. I don't really use them very often anymore, but if I have something that's like too small, then I'll use a hoop so that I can actually, yeah, stitch up to the edge. Got a little book light for when I'm stitching in the dark and Alex is watching TV. 
um, and then yeah, some just miscellaneous stuff, the little felt things that I stick under the Q snaps. This is the bead container that I showed earlier of all those beads. I tried to arrange them by rainbow order. Don't know why. Just thought it looked nice. Then in this container at the back, this is all of the random stuff that I keep for stitching as well. Um, and I think we'll go through it. So we've got these little silicone wraps to hold excess fabric while you're stitching. Holds them to the Q-snap. Little rings to hold bobbins. Just some magnets, some threads. That is some old metallic DMC that wouldn't stay on a bobbin. Needle threaders, I love that kind. Um, bobbin winder, I think you call it. Uh, more of these water soluble pens. This is my favorite brand. Um, they work really, really well. All of my paper bobbins, a little tape measure. That's just for measuring out my fabric when I'm cutting a new piece. Um, got some old needles in a needle case. I don't know why I still have them, but I just keep them. And these are some counting pins, which I find really helpful when I'm finding the center of my fabric or cutting a new piece. I find these counting pins really, really great for that. Um, so they are very cute. So that's everything in that case. And then I also have this case, which is my anchor and off-brand threads. So a lot of these I was given, inherited from you know other people. Um, so I don't have them numbered, they're just in there by colour, and I use them for embroidery more than anything else. Um, this is one of the ones that I have covered in stickers. And I actually got this container as well from someone else, this pink one. I wish I knew where they got it from, because I would order more, because I really like the pink. So that is that container. Now just some miscellaneous things. I use some of this little um, matting stuff on my Lowry to hold the Q-snap. I use that to hold excess fabric, just a little hair clamp. Um, this is my Oort jar, I have three of them at the moment. I've got these two little Aladdin ones, they're very very cute. I got them from work when I used to work at EB Games. Um, they are just so sweet, little gold Aladdin ones. I haven't started on Jasmine yet, only Aladdin. Then I have this box which has all of the threads for my current project that I've got on the go. Um, so this one's all kitted up as Salem Moon, has all of her threads on bobbins, beads, um, specialty beads, like these little stars, um, and I've got my Cranic in there as well, it gives you a bit of an idea about how it sparkles, it looks really nice in the piece, um, so that I usually have around me as well. Then for some extra little things, this highlighter, I love it so much. It has a clear tip so you can see where to start and finish. I use that for my patterns. More of these water soluble pens. Um, these are my needles. I use the Pony color coded tapestry needles. They're really good for dimensions because you've got the different sizes so you can see what you're going to need. Um, my tweezers for picking out all the pet hair that inevitably gets in the projects. My scissors, they're just some generic stalk scissors. Um, and then a lot of the threads that I'm actually working with at the present moment. Um, so they're again for Sailor Moon. So everything that's in other areas I'll keep in that little case. Um, extra little silicon things. And then I've got this little bag. So my mother-in-law sewed this for me. It is so cute. She got it printed with pictures of our dog. And then the lining is also greyhounds. It is the sweetest little bag. I love it so much. In here I keep some beeswax um, for difficult threads that I'm using, um, more of these little rings for bobbins. This little cat that my mother-in-law tatted for me, she makes lace, it is so so sweet. Um, I've got an extra needle that came with a dimensions kit, and these snips, I really like these snips, I just don't use them that often. I find it harder to get to the base of the thread, um, but they're a lot easier to use like on your hand than the little scissors. I've got some old threads from an old project that I really should just get rid of, and another extra needle. So that is everything. Alright, that was the first time I ever did voiceover and did cuts in a video, so hopefully it looks alright. If it doesn't, I'm sure I will get better, and I'm very sorry. Um, that's about everything I have this time. Um, hopefully, we'll see, I will get a little bit more regular. Um, Maybe it'll be a month. Maybe a month will be a good time frame. 12 videos a year seems pretty reasonable. It's more an issue of not having anything to show. You know, I don't see 
It feels bad to sit down and try and film something when you haven't made a lot of progress and you haven't done a lot of stitching. And as much as I like to sit here and talk, I feel boring if I haven't got anything good to show you. So hopefully a month will be the sweet spot, um, depending obviously on how I've been stitching lately. Um, for example, Zelda 2 is coming out in May next year, probably not going to hear from me for a little while until I beat that. So, you know, subject to availability, I guess. Um, but that is everything. Hopefully some things about my setup interested you. Hopefully you found something useful, something you might like, some ideas for your own setup. Um, and leave some comments down below. I'm interested to hear what your favorite stitching items are. What are things you can't live without in your stitching? For me, it's definitely the stand. Stitching two-handed has really, really sped up my stitching um, and it makes it a lot easier to get through things. So for me, definitely the stand, but I'm interested to hear what yours are. So let me know down below and I will talk to you next time. Bye.